from Studio East at Boston University, it's the Weekday Refresh with your hosts Lauren Depper and Jamie Plafker. Today's stories include a Boston landmark report from Andy Rivago and the Boston experience from Patricia Todorova. And now, here they are, Lauren and Jamie. Welcome to Weekday Refresh. I'm your host, Jamie. And I'm Lauren. We've got a great show for you today, folks. From the latest upcoming events to a wild story about a landmark taking the city by storm, you'll be up to date with everything there is to know about Boston. Let's get started. We've got to talk about the past couple of weeks. For all you terriers along Commonwealth Ave, this break came a little early after a few weeks of long and tiring hours of studying. And Boston's favorite holiday was also celebrated throughout the city and around the country, St. Patrick's Day. From the magical sights of South Boston Parade to the crawls of the city bars, it looks like everyone had a great time. I just hope that we're all wearing green. You can't risk getting pinched on a fun day like that. I'd hope not, especially in a town where green is the town's true colors. Now, we all have to discuss something that has annoyed almost every Bostonian. Green line shutdowns, no matter when they fix the trains, you can always bet they'll be down again a couple weeks later. And you'll be out of luck. The MBTA has reported that all green lines will be shut down due to re routine maintenance services. They'll probably just hammer down a nail one at, at one stop and call it a day. If you ask me, I hope they finally fix the Boylston stop. There's always that loud screaming noise that every time you pass through it. Not even noise-canceling headphones can cut it out. Mm. I get that it's the oldest subway in the country, but it shouldn't take more than a day to fix, especially considering they close all the crosswalks along campus. I guess it's just the tea of the city. Speaking of tea, did you hear about how B.J. Novak recently got pardoned by the Museum of Fine Arts? Wait, like the guy who played Ryan from The Office? Yep, actor B.J. Novak, a Newton Mass native, was recently pardoned by the MFA after two decades. In high school, he recorded over the tapes for the museum's self-guided tours. Guests were given false information about the exhibits, which somehow influenced them to dance to, experience the life behind the artwork. I guess so much time has passed since then that the current director decided that it's all forgiven. Who knows, maybe he'll strike again. Well, a lot has happened in our busy little city. Tourists and students just beginning to experience the area look forward to finding landmarks with deep historical significance. Our reporter, Andy Rabago, has found a new landmark that has brought Bostonians and even the internet closer together. Let's go to him live now. Andy? Lauren, Jamie, I'm outside here at the Boston Cop Slide. Uh, Boston is known to have a lot of amazing historical landmarks from the Freedom Trail to the Boston Commons. But one place that people might not know about is of course the Boston Cop Slide. This exact location that we're at here holds uh, a very special meaning, especially to the world of the internet. When a Boston police officer came crashing down this metal slides at high speeds, bumping along to the harsh casing facing upside down. Now all jokes aside, that Boston police officer was uh, treated with, for minor head injury and should be doing all fine. He's back out on the force. But one thing still leaves me to wonder, how is it actually going down that slide? To find out, I had to try for myself. I'm getting into position for all you folks watching at home. This isn't as easy as it looks. Despite looking smooth, this slide was actually quite hard to go down. But rest assured, we still made it happen. So, I guess that was a bit of a rush. I didn't know how that guy was able to go so fast, but it was definitely a, a wild ride. Um, I will say, definitely very fun going down the slide. Make sure you go down safely, but... At the end of the day, very fun. Uh, this Boston Cop Slide has made itself a great addition to the community as another historical landmark. In the long run, I think that uh, it'll be there'll be more slides like this, and more attractions like this coming along the city in the near future. So back to you guys in the studio. This is Andy Urbago for the Weekend Refresh. Thanks for that, Andy. I guess I'll also have to head down there and try it myself. You'll go. You, you're going to go down too, right, Jamie? Oh, yeah. Even though it's just a tad bit dangerous, it's just one of the many landmarks that show what Boston has to offer. And to dive deeper into other great parts of Boston, we have a special guest in the studio today. Please welcome Patricia. Patricia, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I am doing, I'm doing great. Um, how are you, ladies? We're good. We're good, yeah. yeah. Just good? <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a bit about yourself, and how long have you been in Boston? Oh. <laughs> Okay, um, so I am 24 now, uh, from Bulgaria. I came to Boston when I was 18 for college. Uh, I went to uh, Suffolk University in downtown where I studied film and media production. 
and I minored in uh, philosophy and then after I graduated ended up working in a local TV station for a year almost and uh, I am here at BU doing my master's degree in TV producing and management now. Amazing. That's really cool. I'm sure you have gathered some favorite go-to spots over the years, right? Can you tell us a few about in the Boston area? Okay, so um, I don't do any sports, uh, mm -hmm. but the one thing that I do do um, for physical exercise would be walking. And when I say walking, I mean a lot, and I mean all the time, and I mean when it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, I really do enjoy it, and usually when I walk around, I, I really enjoy the Back Bay area, especially around Newberry Street and um, Commonwealth. So I would be walking down uh, up until the public gardens or the common. So all my favorite spots would be there. Um, in terms of like restaurants and, and cool like little places to hang out, I would probably recommend um, this fairly like new mezcal um, restaurant that opened up on Newberry. But um, you're going to have to Google the name because I don't, I don't <coughs> remember it. Um, there's also um, this um, nice little bar in the Lennox Hotel on Copley um, that has like amazing pear martinis. I didn't know I like pear martinis until I tried that one and now I can't stop going there. Um, I would recommend, you know, not going there in sweatpants and flip flops because mm, they yeah. might not. Yeah, like yeah. Oh, they do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, those sound great. I'll have to check them out. What's your favorite neighborhood in Boston that you love to explore and why? So obviously that would be Back Bay, yeah. duh. Um, so um, it really strangely um, reminds me of home. Um, I think that um, it's a very like um, social area. Um, a lot of people around, um, they are friendly usually. Um, like I see like neighbors greeting each other every day which is something that um, my neighbors don't do, for <laughs> example. Um, and it's also like you have a lot of cute little cafes or restaurants, stores, like places to hang out and socialize with friends um, or just spend a lot of money, I guess. And um, it's, 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 it's great, especially when the, the weather is nice. Like you have the Berkeley kids that go out and do like street yeah. performing. So they're obviously very talented. And it's just like the entire like vibe of the area really reminds me of home. And that would be that would be my choice. Yeah, that sounds really great. I know you mentioned this a little bit, but do you have any specific recommendations for good food around there? Oh, ladies, what food are you into? <laughs> oh, I mean, all of them. All of them. <laughs> all of it. Okay. Um, let me think. So, um, in terms of food, if you're into like Latin Latin restaurants mm. and stuff, there's. Um, one bar that I like going to, it's called Puro Ceviche Bar. Obviously, Ooh, ceviche raw food. Yeah. It's, um, it's really it's nice, delish. though. Uh, they have amazing yeah. cocktails as well, good vibes, good music. Um, if you're into French, um, there's like uh, Le Boil, that's right across the street from Puro, actually, not too far away from here. Um, they are like a little bit more old school, though, so mm. I don't know if that's your vibe. Um, if you're, there's like a lot of like, not a lot, but like a few Italian restaurants. Mm. Um, my favorite would be Faccia Faccia. Mm. And uh, let me think of one or two more. Oh, there's a lot of Asian restaurants, like mm -hmm. Chinese food or Korean or, or some of that. Um, my favorite one would probably be For Real. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. And Johnny, what are some of your go-to spots near campus that the average BU student can explore? Oh. <laughs> You got me there. Uh, I actually haven't uh, walked around BU too much just mm. because it's a little far from uh, where I live. And when I'm on campus, I prefer to actually be studying because that's what you go to school for. Mm -hmm. So um, I do value um, the efficiency of, of the, the campus. And I usually go to the Jenga building just mm. because it's closest to calm and I study in calm. So it's just out of convenience. That's the one I would recommend. But uh, realistically, I'm not the best person to Ooh. be asking for recommendations for on <laughs> campus. Happens. Campus. Sure. Well, the Jenga building sounds good. I mean, my stomach is starting to grumble. Maybe I'll get a bite to eat during our next commercial break. Uh -oh. I'm with Jamie. It was great having you today, Patricia. We'll see you again back here in a little bit. On, on the weekday, weekday refresh. <laughs> Whopper, 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 Junior, Double, Triple, Whopper, Impossible, or Bacon, Whopper, I rule this day. BK, have it your way. And Doug. Hello, Ghostbusters. It's Doug, of Doug and Lemu. 
We help people customize and save hundreds on car insurance with Liberty Mutual. Anyway, we got a bit of a situation here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Sure, I can hold. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire in theaters March 22nd. Welcome back to the weekday refresh, everyone. In upcoming news, we've got an exciting event happening soon. Really what? The Boston Marathon, of course. The Ooh. legendary 26-mile, 385-yard race that starts in the town of Hoptington and finishes across from the Boston Public Library. You're right. The race is going to be awesome. I didn't even remember it was happening at all because, like many BU students, we won't be watching. Really? What will we be doing? The real question is, where will we be? And you know the question I say, I don't know. Come 8 a.m. Monday morning, we'll be partying and hopefully dancing around G Court with all my friends. I'm looking around the studio right now and I see a lot of mm -hmm. heads nodding. So I know I won't be the only one. Can't forget, when the roads close, anything goes. It's like the purge, but filled with drunk college students and boards. Yes, Borgs. I can't wait to see everyone. what everyone names their Borgs this year. I'm going to call mine Borgalicious and Bedazzle It. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. I guess we'll have to see what Marmon brings us this year. Only time can tell. And that's all the time we have today, folks. We hope to see you again tomorrow on The, the Weekday, Weekday Refresh. Refresh.